Right, Shalom, Israel. I'm the brother Jim uh, Squat Amar from the GMS Dallas camp. I got the brother. I got the brother Yaqua. Shalom. And uh, we want to come back to you with part two of America will not be great again. Okay, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shad, Bahashim Rakakudash. All right, I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings out out there to all the uh, great friends who is word and truth and sincerity. Okay, <clears throat> I want to come back to you with another article. You know, this is once again this uh, devil Trump. Okay, being a good devil that he is, just you know, out outdoing himself, man. <laughs> he's he's being great at his job, and man, uh. We, we really just give him a round of applause in Great Millstone, man. You know, he's, he's bringing a good end to the society, okay? So, uh, if the brother want to get that article, go ahead. Con, I got you. All right. Oh, all right. Here we go. This is uh, U.S. Way or No Way, okay? And it says Trump arrested, or so like a Trump treated rest of the world as America's footstool. At UNSC. You want me to read this part or you want me to read that down here? No, um, before, before you continue, I just want brothers to, you know, really hop in on that, that, that name, man, this article. U.S. way or no way. Now, that, that's just the most probable thing, you know, I, I've ever heard, man, for, for them to be, you know, doing a, a meeting or, you know, a, 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 con a congressional, you know, order. They, they named this article U.S. Way or No Way, man. You see? You got it up. Gone. All right. So, uh, reading down here, it says, U.S. President Donald Trump at the U.N. Security Council meeting, September 26, 2018. And, you know, it shows a, p a picture of Trump right here. <clears throat> and it says, Donald Trump chaired the U.N. Security Council this week to deliver a thuggish ultimatum to the world to obey American orders on Iran or face retribution for not knowing to Washington's uh, dictate. Mm -hmm. They ordered another attack on what was that, Iran? Uh, it says, um, well, he's saying pretty much they gave him an option. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're either going to do this or you're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? When it comes concerning uh, the orders on Iran, you know what I'm saying? So it says the world's highest forum for maintaining global security and peace was thus turned into a platform of brazen criminal American rhetoric. The 73rd United Nations General Assembly in New York this week was a head spinning spectacle of American bullying and arrogance to the point where delegates couldn't contain their laughter at one stage over Trump's ridiculous self-righteous speech. Precept. All right, so this is Proverbs 16. We'll start at verse 18. 
It says, uh, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. But it better it better it is better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. And that's what uh Trump has displayed throughout his whole presidency, man, that that pride, that proud Edomite spirit. You know what I'm saying? And that in that article, that's that's a that's a a very arrogant way of you know displaying his um intentions you know what i'm saying because he just said that look they that he gave an, an ultimatum you know to make a decision what, what they were going to do when it came to the orders on iran you know what i'm saying and it said right there that uh that they were uh that of of American bullying and arrogance, okay? Because yep. you know the scriptures when it talk, it, it, you know it, call, it calls America being the hammer of the earth, and that's what and that's what they do, man. These are the, these are examples of the things that they do, uh, uh, displaying their authority over uh, other the other these other nations, setting up embassies everywhere, threatening them, you know, instead. Yep. Establishing their own governments over them. If they don't want, if they don't listen, they they take them out. You know. Uh, but that's. Oh, I was like, yeah. No, that was that was it on that. Uh, Job twenty. Con, con, I got you right here. I'll I'll read it for you. It says, uh, this is Job chapter twenty. You said verse nineteen, right? Yeah, con. It says, uh, because he had oppressed and had forsaken the poor. Because he had violently taken away a house which he built in that, surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. There, right. there shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. All right. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. That's right. When he is about to fill his belly... The Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. All right. It says, uh, he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is, it is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gal. Terrors are upon him. Yeah. Say in the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in strength. Because when he when he implements that chip, man, that's when all the chaos is gonna happen. As soon as he implements that chip, that's the one of the last prophecies to take place. Man, this 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 country about to go to hell. Gone, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Um it says there, he shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through, man. Let's talk about them ICBMs. You know, because if you read down, it's talking about the glittering sword. You know what I'm saying? That's that. That's them uh, missiles, you know, shooting forth. You know what I'm saying? Because the scriptures also talk about an a arrow that returneth not back, or something to that effect, roughly paraphrasing. You know what I'm saying? Uh but uh let's see is there more on this it says uh all darkness shall be hid in the secret places a fire not blown shall consume him it shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle and that's that fire not blown man them thermal uh uh thermonuclear uh, missiles man those intercontinental intercontinental uh ballistic missiles man Cause if you wanna, if you wanna get that in a, what is that, Jeremiah fifty? Um, we, we might as well bring that one out. Yeah. What? Uh, I was looking for the where, where it talks about the famine. Was that Jeremiah forty nine? Was that in fifty? I'm sorry. Uh, say that again, Ike. The famines was I was saying famines. Oh, you like? Oh, you like talking about the? Uh, I know what you're talking about. That's, uh, 
That's a fifty-one. You can. Uh, oh, that's fifty-one. Yeah, you want me to? You want me to get that one real quick? Uh, yeah, we can just get that one. I'm talking about it. I'm discouraged. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna start at the top. It says Jeremiah chapter fifty-one, verse one. It says, "Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind." Verse two. And I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Against him that bendeth, uh, against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifted himself up in his uh, brigandine, and spare yet not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his power, of the Lord of hosts, through their land was filled with sin against the ho uh, Holy One of Israel. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's going to happen to the nation of Edom, man. The so-called uh, uh, white man that you see here today in America, man, ru ruling over the nation of Israel. You know, for all the atrocities, all the wickedness, and all the evil that they've done unto the people of the Most High, man, this is their judgment, you know? And we can see it being made manifest, uh, you know, even today, with the way that Trump is conducting himself against these other nations. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, they're going to they're going get tired of his bullshit, man. They're going to get tired of America's, America's uh, tyranny. You know, hammering all over the earth. You know, they're going to get tired of that and eventually they're going to retaliate. You know? But, uh, I mean, I think there's more. It says, Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's true, man. We got to be we got to flee of the, out of the ways of, 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 of this place, man, out, out of America, out of the uh, philosophies and ideals of America, man. We got to uh, be cut those things off, you know? That's right. That don't mean literally flee. You try to go to the condemnation of uh, Israel, man, the current Israel state right now. That don't mean leave the country. It means spiritually get out of the ways of Babylon, a.k.a. America. Come All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, it says, uh, He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad, man. So, you know, they've all sipped that cup uh, 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 of America, man. All, all that wine, them philosophies, those ideals, those ways of being, they've all drunken of that cup. You know what I'm saying, and and uh, you know they getting they getting tired of America's bullshit, man. Or they, well, you can see it now, but eventually they're gonna get to a point where they're just gonna say fuck America and and uh, completely annihilate this place. I believe that's in. Uh, if you want to get that in Jeremiah 50. Oh, uh, you can start. Uh, I mean, go ahead and start at 9. Okay, come Just to make the point. It's Jeremiah chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 9, it says, For lo, I will raise and cause to, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man, none shall return in vain. Yep, man, them nations are going to gather up against America, man, and ultimately unleash that wrath that the Most High had uh, reserved. You know, like it said right there, you know, from their arrows shall be as a mighty, uh, mighty expert man, talking about them missiles, man. Hey, can I get a precept out? You can, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, this Isaiah chapter 13, starting at verse 16, it says, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, 
their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives rest. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, their eyes shall not spare children. And that's that's going into when, when these missiles, before these missiles get shot off, these other nations gonna be at America neck, man. Okay. They the Medes, the Russians, that also goes for the Iranians, okay, uh, the uh, the Chinese, more bites, okay. These all all these other nations are gonna be on American soil, and it's gonna be martial law. They are gonna kill these kids, these women. You see, they are gonna be going in before the missiles actually get shot over. Them. Uh, Khan, yeah, uh, I believe there's a little more on that. Khan, it says, At Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency shall be as when the most time overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It, it, uh, it, verse 20, it says, It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. So you notice how that's how you know that the, the previous verse that I went into was talking about Babylon, man. The daughter of Babylon, America. Because they say this this place is gonna be utterly destroyed. The Arabians not gonna pitch ten here, okay? Neither neither shall the sheep shepherds make fold here. Okay. Right. Like it says right there, it says uh you know, it shall be when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what I'm saying? And we all know what happened to those places. Uh, let's right. see. They were yeah, Khan, they were destroyed, man, by fire. Let's see. Um, can you go back to that Jeremiah 50? Khan, I got you right here. It's Jeremiah chapter 50. We're going to start at uh, the end of verse 9. It says, uh, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From, from thence shall she be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Mm -hmm. and, Ch and Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith Yahweh. Okay, hold up. Can you get me Revelations, the 18th chapter? Uh, start at verse 2. Uh, it said, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Right. Now remember, we read that in Jeremiah uh, 50. We're talking about how uh, uh, an assembly of nations shall rise up against Babylon. Um, and how, uh, that, you know, how from then she shall be taken, the hour shall be as a mighty extra man, none shall return in vain. You know, that's yep. what this is talking about. Like, go ahead. Uh, it's verse 3. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of the fornication. Oh, so, like, are you going to read uh, Revelation 18, verse 3? Or back in Jeremiah? No, yeah, Revelations, keep going. Okay, uh, it says, For all nations, Revelation 18 and 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of the fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Yeah, and one of those ways that these other nations got rich through America was uh, through uh, slavery, you know what I'm saying, as well as uh, other ways of commerce, that, you know, like trading, you know. Or, you know, set, buying and selling all these things, and as far as the wine, you know, what I'm saying, uh, all of them, them drinking that wine, man, that's um, you know, them philosophies and them doctrines that they took in from America. That's right. You know, all the delicacies that America has developed, these other nations have taken a part of it and become uh, rich off of these things. Nah. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Revelation chapter 
18, verse 4. It said, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Yeah, man, that's talking to the elect. You know, the, the men that, uh, like it says in Revelations, that men uh, uh, that were virgins and in their mouth was saw no guile. You know, those are those men that aren't going to be partakers of, of America's uh, 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 sins. You know, those men that aren't going to receive of those plagues, man. Talking about those plagues, talk about that, that thermal, thermal nuclear destruction. All right. It says, uh, go ahead, keep going. Before we keep going, I believe there's one in Nahum that I want to bring out, maybe. Let me check it out real quick. Can I bring this priest up out? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. While I look this up, you bring that out. Okay. Back in Revelation chapter 18, verse 3, when it was talking about how all the nations basically got rich, you know, after uh, abundance of her delicacies, delicacies, and the brother had brought up slavery was one of the main key things that they got rich off of. It's a precept going into that. It says, Isaiah chapter 51, starting at verse 20, it says, Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. That's talking about the nation of Israel. It says, They are all full of the fury of the um, of Yahweh, the rebuke of the Most High, going into that punishment, which was slavery. It says, Verse 21, therefore hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus said Yahweh, uh, the most high, that pleaded the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thy hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it in the hand of them that afflict thee, and that cut those dregs was that slavery. It says in verse 23, but I will put it in the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, bow down that we may go over it. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. And that's basically taking that slavery, you know, a thousand times more, man. Okay, but they basically walked over our backs, you know, physically and spiritually. Come on, yeah, right. that's right, that's right. Now, uh, I'm going to bring this out in Nahum, since we're talking about that, you know, going into that recompense that America's going to receive, as well as the people, as well as the people leading it. You know what I'm saying? Like you brought out in uh, Isaiah 51, you know what I'm saying, where it says, uh, Behold, I have taken thine hand, and the cup, even the, uh, not that one, it says, where it says, uh, No, I was trying to find that one part. I can't remember where it was. It says, uh... You said the book of Nahum? Yeah, I got it pulled up. I was just trying to remember that one part that you had just read. I can't... Oh, in Revelations? No, in Isaiah. 51. Okay, 51. Oh, it says, um... Yeah, uh, 51 verse 21. I mean, verse 22, it says, Thus said Yahweh, the Most High, that pleaded the cause of his people, Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. Oh, okay, con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we 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 drunk of that cup. That's the cup representing slavery. You know what I'm saying? It, the most high is going to take it out of our hands or out of the hands of, of of Israel and give it to the into the hands of these Edomites and these other nations as well. But specifically talking about uh, more specifically talking about Esau. You know what I'm saying? Cuz uh, like the brother just read, you know what I'm saying? They they uh, they took that, they took that the slavery that that was on us, and really, you know, took it took it far. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why in Isaiah the forty seventh chapter it says that they have very he heavily laid the yoke. You yeah. know, they went the extra mile when it came to us being in slavery. You know what I'm saying? Did all kinds of extra shit. You know, right. uh, but yeah, get, get, I'll get it. I'll get it. Name home. It says. This is Nahum chapter one verse two. It says, "The Most High is jealous, and the Lord Lord revengeth." 
The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. And that's true, man. Like we read in Revelations that um, talking about how her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High had remembered her iniquities. Like it says right here, uh, the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Now, when you go to uh, go into that word reserve, all right, if my computer will my computer will load. Okay, here we go. It says reserve or reserveth. All right. In the Hebrew, it says to avenge, take vengeance, revenge. Oh, wait, did I pull up the right word? Select it. Okay, reserveth. All right. Here it goes. It says to keep. All right. Keep guard, reserve, maintain. All right. So look, I'm going to look up that word. Um, reserve. All right. In the, in the dictionary. There's a point that I wanna I wanna I wanna point out. It says reserve. I, if I can, uh, I'm pretty sure this is the word I was thinking of. It says um, somewhere down here. It says, all right. It says right here. All right. So this is reserve, right? In a dictionary, it says refrain from delivering a judgment or decision immediately without due consideration or evidence. And that's what the Most High is doing, man. He's he's uh, slowly letting that uh, Esau build up that tab, so at the end when he judges him, he can show him, look, this is what this is what's going been going on. This is what's happening. He done all these, and that's what we're doing, man. We're we're uh, revealing that evidence, you know, that all that all the all that evidence that's been been piled, been piling up throughout the ages. You know, that's what the men of the Lord are out there in the highways and byways doing, man. You know what I'm saying, and the Most High is, you know, once we once we uh, finish with with uh, what we're doing, showing that evidence, the Most High is going to re re deliver that judgment. You know what I'm saying, the Most High is the Most High is not going to. Okay, come. Sorry, I no, you're good. I, know, I, I gotta find it, but I, just, I was just letting you know. I want to get a precept uh, pertaining to that. He has a, he's not going to judge them until. Uh, what they what 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 they've been doing is fulfilled. And I, I got it right here now. Okay, Khan, go ahead. Oh well, I got it. Because see, back in Genesis, you had certain uh, covenants that we were given, but certain things couldn't take place until you know other nations had you know got done with that iniquity, like right here in Genesis chapter fifteen. Okay, this is a vision that Abraham was getting given. I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet filled full. So that's just that's giving you a, an example of how the most high not going to act until a certain people's iniquity is full. You see what I'm saying? Damn. Khan, that's a good precept. Or that's a good example. Uh, what, uh, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, that's why these Edomites, all the, all the iniquity they committed, man, it seems like they never... Suffer or anything bad happen to him, but that's because the Most High is reserving that judgment, that ultimate payback, that recompense. You know what I'm saying? But uh, okay, that's it for Nahum. I believe we're in Revelations 18. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, 
Now, there's a lot of good points here in, in Revelations, but there's a, I just want to hit some quick points, and maybe later on, maybe like part three, you can hit them, come back and hit them points. Let's see. Uh, okay. Revelations chapter 18. Start at verse 7. Start at 7. Or oh, so like start at verse 6. Revelation chapter 18, verse 6. It says, Re Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. Yeah, man. So everything that they've done to the earth, to the nation of Israel, animals, everything, they're going to receive double, man. Right. Go ahead. Uh, this verse 7 says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived delicious, deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Man, that goes perfectly with Isaiah, the 47th yeah. chapter. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, you know what? Keep going. Uh, verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahweh, power who judges her. And that's the ultimate judgment for this place. You know what I'm saying? For the... The horror that rideth on the beast, man. That's the uh, her ultimate judgment is to burn with a a, a a fire unquenchable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. Go ahead, keep reading. Come on, verse nine. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, At last, at last, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Yeah, man, they're going to be watching, man. Uh, uh, the whole world's going to be watching when uh, America receives that judgment. You know what I'm saying? You got all sorts of ways to, to view this event. You know, all the satellites that Esau put up there, man, the, the whole world's going to see. You know, go ahead. Verse 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Yeah, man, America's going to be destroyed, so all these other people that are make, still making money off America, all, all this trading and everything, all the merchandise that they were buying and selling, all that, uh, you know, all that business that was going with America, man, they're going to uh, weep and mourn, you know what I'm saying, because no, they ain't going to be able to do it no more. And that's beautiful too, man. Because these America, man, honestly, that's stupid. A lot of stuff that America buys from um, these other countries, they can do it themselves. You know what I'm saying? God, and it gives you an exa it gives you some examples or a lot of examples in the next few verses of all the things. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't got to read all that. You know, you can just jump down to uh, verse 15. Because that's mostly how America receives their, uh, you know, their um, uh, merchandise, right? and uh, and uh, and uh, how they deal. You know what I'm saying with these other nations, man. You like when you ever see them big ass ships, you know what I'm saying with those big containers. You know the the different colored containers on top of yeah. those ships. You know yeah. what I'm saying that's how America, should, you know, uh, uh, how do you say uh, trades? You know what I'm saying. Yeah. 
All right, go ahead. Come, verse 17. It's like verse 18. And cried when they saw. It's like, I'm going to start in uh, the middle of 17. And every shipmaster and all the company of ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood far off. And cried when they saw the smoke of a bird. They said, What city is like unto this great city? <laughs> I mean, damn, these people is like really crying. Right. And they can't, <laughs> and they cast dust on their heads and cry, weeping and wailing, saying, at last, at last, that great city where you were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Yeah, man, it's all this, this all that's going to happen within an hour, man. That's how quick it's gonna be destroyed, you know. All the years and all the all the many years that it took to build America to a point that it is today, man, it's gonna be brought to nine less than and, and let really less than an hour. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's the, I mean that's really the point on that. I mean you can keep reading the, on this, but I, we're really just going into the uh, destruction of America, man. We can really go into that later on. But uh, let's see. Uh, did we finish off that? Finish that off in Isaiah, Jeremiah fifty. Um, uh, it's a more to it, you know. If you want. To okay, go. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead and start at verse eleven. Okay. This is Jeremiah fifty, chapter eleven. It says, "Because ye were glad." Um, I'm gonna start at verse ten because it's short right there. We're that backdrop it says, and Chaldea shall be a spoil as the elites of Edom, and all that spoil her shall be satisfied, saith Yahweh, because ye were glad, because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of my heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass, and bellow as bulls. And that and that's ultimately what it boils down to, man. Ultimately, uh Esau has destroyed and very laid and very heavily laid the yoke on the nation of Israel, man, and that's why these things are gonna happen to them. You know, that's why they're gonna go into slavery and you know, that's why they're gonna die by the sword. You know? That's why all these things have to happen. Because they did it to us. You know what I'm saying? They still they still doing it to us to this day. You know that 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 judgment is is reserved and is waiting uh, to this day, man, and it's gonna happen. You know it has to happen. Go ahead. Verse twelve it says, "Your mother shall be sore confounded; she that bear you shall be ashamed." That's talking about a uh, Great Britain, all right? Great. Go ahead. You know, because out of America came, you know, out of us, uh, like out of Britain came out, uh, came, was born America, you know. Go ahead. It says, Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. So that's come full circle, man. These other nations are going to be dry land and deserts too. Uh, yeah, go, uh, keep going on that. So it's just going to be a big pile of fire and, you know, ash and brimstone and all kinds of, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to be, it's going to be completely destroyed to where nothing's going to be able to live in it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, it's, you know, except for maybe like the beast, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, not, you know, later on, you know, or right, uh, let's keep going. And that's why we that's why we take we talking about those uh, ICBMs, man, those missiles. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, a majority or not a, like a, a very good amount of uh, these other heathen nations have nuclear weapon capabilities. 
You know what I'm saying? That's why it, it, the scriptures talk about an arrow or the glistening sword or the arrow that returns not backward. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's talking about. Let's see. Uh, I mean, you could really keep going, but that was pretty much a good point right there. You know what I'm saying? But, I, I, you know, I still want to go into that Isaiah 47. But, I, you know what I'm saying? We can make that we can make that part three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, I, I want to continue making some points on, on, on these uh, in Jeremiah and, and Revelations 18 as well. I mean, we also need to get that in Revelations 11. You know, so we're going to end it off here on this. But, you know, there is going to be a part three going in, going a little more into this topic. That's right. Or you got you got anything else? Yeah, that's it, man. Like, we, we, we doing this so that the devil can come down even quicker, man. Okay. Khan, all right then. Well, with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Al-Kahalal. Yahweh. Bahashim. Yahweh. Hashem Rukabudash. Hashem Rukabudash, all right. Then I'm going to say Shalom. Shalom.